cooler. Um, so I get a really cool job because I get to travel between our commercial and our technical teams and really start to blend together what is it that cooler's expertise can meet our customer requirements, right? And I personally enjoy it because I get to work a lot on these collaborations with different customers like Ambrius. And we'll get to talk about a little bit of our project here with you today. And for that, I'll let Eric introduce himself. Hi, my name is Eric Vaknin. I'm the uh, Senior Manager of Battery Integration for Amprius. Been with Amprius for uh, almost two years, but I've been working in the battery space for about 25 years. Electrical uh, engineering is my uh, background, but I've worked for cell manufacturers and pack manufacturers and for uh, a number of large OEMs like Apple and Amazon designing battery systems. All right. So today we really plan on um, taking some time to look at some of the latest developments of cell technology at Amprius and really how Cooler was brought in to, to help integrate these into a um, Cooler One de reference design pack that uses these high energy innovative um, cells. And really our main goal here being to provide customers with building blocks that really integrate these high energy cells into lightweight and then volume efficient uh, packs for e aviation. So without further ado, Eric, we'll, we'll go into that a little bit more. Yeah. So uh, Amprius is a uh, advanced lithium ion battery technology company. We were founded in 2008 with technology that came out of Stanford for silicon nanowires. Um, we've since gone on to build cells with silicon nanowires, with silicon oxide, with uh, silicon carbide. We've been commercially shipping cells since 2018. We ship the highest energy density cells in the world today, 450 watt hours per kilogram. We'll start shipping cells that are 500 watt hours per kilogram starting early next year. Um, so these cells are uniquely uh, positioned for the aerospace and aviation industry. Uh, they're capable of the very high energy density and from very, very high power densities as well. And the cell that we're specifically working on cooler with is our S88 cell. This is a silicon oxide cell capable of some very high discharge rates, 10C, um, very high charge rates, 6C and uh, 370 uh, watt hours per kilogram. So this cell is uh, uniquely positioned to help support the uh, aerospace industry, specifically for EV toll aircraft. We're talking about small uh, manned electric flight vehicles um, that are, uh, there's a whole industry that's about to take off in that regards. And so, yeah. <laughs> so we're happy to support that. And so, um, you know, one of the, 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 the challenges that we get from our customers is these cells are great, but we have challenges containing thermal runaway in pouch cells in general. And then on top of that, you add our layer of uh, very high energy density. So our cells aren't any more susceptible to thermal runaway. We've, we've tested them here with the cooler team. But when they do go into thermal runaway, they tend to do so more energetically. So, um, the strategies that are necessary to contain that kind of thermal runaway, and then the requirements that are added by the FAA and the EASA in terms of how thermal, run, uh, thermal runaway is supposed to be managed, um, sought us to set, seek out a partner to help us find a solution for this industry, and that's why we came to Cooler. So you'll really hear a lot today about um, this Cooler One design solution, and it's really our holistic approach to overall design. But what does that really mean? It means that Cooler knows there isn't a one-size-fit-all solution to all of these designs, right? But when you start looking at combining state-of-the-art cells, advanced modeling, you've got enhanced testing and expertise, that's when you really start to be able to push the boundaries of what's possible in the field. And it can be challenging to find solutions uh, to, to most of these, right? But when you're looking at these different collaborations, that's how we make it possible. Whether it be trying to match some of the safety standards that Will was talking about with 20793, or you're looking at incorporating these high energy cells into a lightweight, very small pack um, to fly. The Cooler One Design Solutions is really meant to be collaborative in nature and make the advancements possible. So where we really like to start talking about this journey is 
with the cell itself. And we like a full characterization of the cell because it, if we're understanding the mode of failure, we're understanding the energy of the failure, it's easier to incorporate that into our design, into our modeling, right? And I wish I could tell you that there was a one-size-fits-all solution to testing, but we know that there's not. It's more of a Venn diagram of sorts, right? Where some of them will give you similar um, characteristics, but really each of the testing will provide you with a unique look at the cell and the overall design. And so with Cooler One Design Solutions, we have a suite of testing that starts with the bomb calorimetry. It really gives us an idea of the total heat output, precise heat control, and really can connect us to uh, historic testing of, of cells, right? Which we want to do for some of these newer cells. We can then move on to our fractional um, thermal run. Calorimetry, um, so our FTRC, which will give us a more complete breakdown of that total energy, um, not just total, but fractional and directional. So we can start to see, is our energy coming from the cell casing itself, or is it coming out of the ejecta, the gases, and where is that really going? And then we can take a look at our IZM, which will give us shape, um, size, distribution of the particles that are being released during thermal runaway. And then we can also start to evaluate some of the materials that go into that pack and how can it interact, how compatible is it with the different cells that we're using. So ICM also gives us a good idea of the type of energy that we're looking at for this project in particular. So I do have an example on the next slide and Will has shown a couple of examples of our ICM. This one in particular was of our safe case material um, put up against a P45B cell. And just to give you a sense of the energy that, that we're looking at. So as you can imagine, not every design and not every material um, will, used can really stand up against this kind of energy, right? These kind of blasts. And for example, so I compare our safe case material, which is on the top, which you can see that, the, that that energy does not blow through that material, right? It stands up pretty well. But when you start to look at other thermal barriers, it doesn't quite do the same job, right? And so with this, it's easy to see why certain modules with such high energy, um, like the ones from Amprius, uh, will really take either large size or um, weight penalties in order to, to protect against that. But what we really want to do here is to have that same level of containment, but keep it light and keep it small. And so how do we really do this? Like I mentioned, we start with that suite of testing. And so for the Amprius cell, we started with the bomb calorimeter, which really showed the cell failure at the terminal edges. We started to see that the, the temperature ranges when we look at thermal runaway, and we also see different extents of, of the energy coming from the thermal runaway of those cells. When we started to look at the FTRC, now we can start to see where is the distribution for that energy going. So about 30 to 40 percent is in the cell body, but then you have the rest of the 60 percent coming out of either the positive or negative ends of those cells from the gas and the different ejectas. And then finally, with the IZM, you can start to see the overall heat. So we got that, those heat maps that show you've got very high heat spikes in certain areas. So when you're starting to look at the pack, you start to see, OK, where do we want to reinforce the pack a little bit more than others, right? So some of the things we don't show is that IZM also gives you energy flux rates um, and heat flux ranges. This essentially gives you this idea of being able to pull all this data together to put into our models to really help inform that design. And then with all this data, right, we feed it into our modeling software to help inform it, the design much better than without, right? With our end goal of this collaboration really being, in particular, to have a compact, lightweight, 14 cell design where we can have efficient thermal and safety considerations. And we also essentially started, now we know that this can be further built upon 
Um, this is not a finalized design, right? But we started with the initial design concept aimed to have just maximum thermal conductivity targeting a gravimetric design around 320 watt hours per kilogram. Um, and you can see our machined aluminum housing. We integrate some fins into there. Um, and the pouches, which you see in purple, surrounded by some of those thermal pads that are really used for heat transfer as well as thermal isolation. What we want to have is, is two halves of a whole. So you got the seven cells on one and seven cells on the other one um, with space around to accommodate some of the wiring and the protective materials. So like I mentioned, we do want to be able to grow upon this and improve upon it. Um, but this is starting to give you an idea of kind of what we're working on right now. And so the next step in this journey would really be to take that initial design into our modeling software and see how it stands up to uh, simulations of thermal runaway. And in this way, we're really able to simulate different kinds of materials as well in that pack. And how can our design improve a little bit easier than that full-scale prototyping? And so these initial simulations include this simplified two to seven cell just to have a little bit of quicker run through um, for the computational speed. Um, and we're looking at steady, steady state solutions just aimed at that worst case scenario. We don't have any radiation and essentially assuming uniform heating. But what we want to see is essentially what I show here, where you have the cells that are heating up, and we show that with red. Um, we have that high heat. But the rest of that, that containment, the module is staying very cool. So you have those blue, green colors. Um, for our, our colorblind individuals, I will try to explain it a little bit more. But right, we've got, we've got our, our base here that, that stays really cool, even if all of the cells are going into thermal runaway. And so we can start to see that these early designs do show some promise um, for thermal runaway containment within that module. And like I mentioned previously, we're still working on this design, right? We're well aware that there are different challenges that we still need to overcome and account for. And I kind of show three of those here. The first being the containment of that high heat. So we want to prevent either cell-to-cell -cell propagation or keep it contained within the module. So we look at things like active or passive cooling methods. The second challenge would be to meet that high pack energy density requirements. So how do we do that? We start looking at the materials, low mass ablative heat sh shields, uh, heat spreaders, or materials with different thicknesses, right? We can use different thicknesses for the outer versus the inner sections. That third challenge would be to maintain the proper header space so that we can contain the glasses without overpressurizing, right? We don't want a bomb here. Um, so we're optimizing the header space and looking at perhaps different cell configurations so that it, it fits well and still contains all of that properly. And so finally, I'd like to go over um, what the future of this project looks like and trying to keep you all on time for lunch, I promise. Um, but in particular, what are, what are we wanting to do, right? We want to develop a thermally uh, safe module that's really tailorable for different customer needs. Like I mentioned before, we know that there's not this one-size-fits-all approach, right? There's not a one-size-fits-all design either. And so our step one is really to address the challenges that I mentioned at first. So we want to obtain that thermally satisfactory design that can be tailorable. And hopefully, but around January of next year, we're looking at trying to evaluate the optimized cells from Amprius and get an optimized design from thermal modeling, um, as well as looking at material compatibility tests in our lab to see, OK, hypothetically, this, this will be compatible. But what does it actually look like in the lab? And so we can do that here. And then our step two would be to start verifying it um, in reality, we want to build a prototype and actually test it to thermal runaway and see how it responds. We also want to keep in mind those additional regulations, right? When we're looking at the FAA, we know that it's not just about thermal runaway, right? So you want to keep that in mind. So hopefully around March of next year, right? If, if things go well, we know it's not always the case, but we try to keep to that. And then hopefully around uh, 
June of next year, we're looking at the delivery of this tailorable unit, right? We want to have that base pack design with these Amperia cells that we know can be tailorable and that can be easily switched out whether we want to start adding different BMS. We want to look at scaling the design or using different cells. Now that we have that base of the modeling as well as some of that base testing, this can be switched out a lot easier. I don't know, Eric, how does that sound to you? That's good, yeah, our, our, our target was to, uh, to have Cooler help us build something that we could give to the industry as a building block to enable you know, a manned electric flight we challenged them to, to build something that, that not only could contain the thermal runaway, but that could provide some passive thermal management that could provide the necessary compression to uh, have our cells op operate optimally. And um, to do so in a package that didn't overburden the energy density of the cells because you know, if the feedback for using a pouch cell is you have to surround it with so much interstitial material that you lose the energy density advantage, then, then what's the point? Avoid the Dreamliner. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We do not need that. But yeah, that's, that's essentially what our very quick introduction, right? And we're welcome to more discussion either now or during lunch, which is exciting. Um, but thank you all for listening.